The first data structure we're going to implement is a stack. These basic data structures are simple, but also useful for solving all sorts of problems. You can think of stacks conceptually like a literal physical stack of something, like pancakes, books, or dinner plates. There are only two ways to manipulate a stack. You can add an item to a stack by placing it on top. We'll call that a push operation. You can also take the top item off of the stack. This is a pop operation. In computer science, a stack is known as a LIFO data structure. That stands for last in, first out. If you're familiar with iOS development, this might remind you of the navigation stack. View controllers are pushed onto and popped off of the stack. Undo is another example. The last action you took is the first action to be undone. The main goal of building something like this is to enforce how you access data. In the case of a stack, you can only add or remove elements from one side of the data structure. To implement our stack, we're essentially going to create a wrapper around Swift's array. We'll actually use an array as the storage for our stack. Out of the box, array gives us constant time insertions and deletions from the end via the append and pop last methods. We'll use those two methods to implement our push and pop operations. As we mentioned in the introduction, we're going to be using unit tests to check our data structures and algorithms. But since testing isn't the focus of this course, we've gone ahead and set up a testing environment for you. So if you want to follow along, we recommend you use the starter projects for each video. If you're following along, open up the starter project and open stack.swift. First, we need to make the stack type. It's a struct with a generic type we'll call element. We talked about three essential ingredients that a stack needs. Some kind of storage, a push operation, and a pop operation. Start with the storage. As Katie mentioned, we'll use an array. Then I can add a push method. It will take a single element of our generic element type. Because storage is an array, I was able to use array's append method to add element to the end. Note that this method must be marked as mutating. It changes the storage array and therefore the stack. While it isn't necessary to implement a stack, it will be helpful for debugging to have a customized description. Create an extension on stack and have it adopt the custom string convertible protocol. Use the Fixit to get a description stubbed up for you. To create the custom description, I'm going to iterate through the storage array with map and turn each element into a string. And then join those individual strings and put a space in between them. Now we can test out the stack. First, open stack test case .swift in the assistant editor. We already have a test class set up for you with the necessary imports. We just need to add the tests. We're going to be writing several tests. It'll make our lives easier to create a stack that we can use in all of them. To add items to that stack, I'll override the setup method. That will reset the stack before each test. If you get an error, like I'm getting now, try building the project. Without working, write a test to see if the stack's description matches what you expect. For the first test, let's take a red-green refactor approach without the refactor. Here, that just means make sure the test fails if you compare the description to something you know is wrong. Run the test with command U to see what happens. And the test fails! Yay? It also tells you explicitly the values that aren't matching. 
Now try to make the test pass by using the value you expect, 1, 2, 3, 4. and run the test again. This time it passes. Back in our stack struct, we can write the second and final essential method, pop. We're making use of a method already implemented in Swift's array again with pop last. If you option click on it, you can see it removes and returns the last element in an array. We don't necessarily want to do anything with the return value here, so add at discardable result above the method. That will stop those annoying yellow warnings from popping up when you don't use the result of the method. Now, back in the test case, write a new test using pop. We expect the value on top of the stack to be 4. Run it with command U. It's working. We've got a basic stack. There are some features that are handy and quick to add. One of them is peak. This uses the last property of Swift's array to let us inspect the top item on the stack without changing the stack. Go ahead and write a test for that as well. If we peek at the top of the stack, we expect to see a 4. And we do. You can also quickly add an isEmpty property to see if the stack is empty. This uses the peak method you just wrote. Array's last property is an optional, so if peak returns nil, you know there's nothing in the stack. Now write a quick test for is empty. And let's try out that red-green methodology again. We expect the stack to have something in it, but let's say that this is true and see if the test fails. Command U to see that test fail. All right, then make that an assert false because we know there should be something in the stack, not nothing. And then our test passes. It's kind of a pain to create stacks right now. We have to use the push method on elements one at a time. We're backing this stack with an array. We could also initialize it with an array. To do that, we need to write two initializers. The first one should take no parameters and do nothing. It's just to make an empty stack. Now we can create an initializer that takes an array of type element as an argument. And then simply assign that array to the storage property. Let's write a test for this too. Create an array that would match our stack. And then compare the stack we've been using with a new stack initialized with the array. When we initialize a stack like this, it can infer the type of element from the array we pass in. There's no need to use the angle brackets here. Try running the tests. We've got an error now because the stack we made doesn't conform to the equatable protocol. That means we can't check to see if one stack is equal to another stack. We can fix that. You don't even need a new line of code to conform to equatable. Add equatable to the stack declaration to start. That isn't quite enough because we have this generic element to contend with. We need to ensure that the type of element is also equatable. Run the tests again. And we have a stack initialized with an array. There's one more fancy thing we can do with our stack. 
create another extension on Stack. This time, it should adopt the expressible by array literal protocol. If you've used sets before, you've seen how you can initialize them with something that looks like an array. This is an array literal. To give our stack the same functionality, we need to add an initializer. Autocomplete will probably help you out here. You just need to change that self.arrayLiteral element to element. And to wrap it up, set storage to the elements that were passed in. For the final test, create a totally new stack inside the test method. Let's make it a stack of types of pancakes. Copy that array literal of pancakes, and then find out if the stack and the array literal are equal. If you're seeing this error, again, just build the project. Option click on stack just to prove to yourself that it's really a stack and not an array, and then run the tests. With that last passing test, our stack is complete. Despite their simplicity, stacks are used for all sorts of problems. You'll see them again several times throughout this course. What did you think about stacks? Do you use them in your code? Do you provide your own custom implementation? Definitely let us know in the comments below. And hey, keep stacking. Cheers. <laughs>